Hi everyone, welcome back to my home studio. You're watching Art on the Creek and my name is Anne. I'm so happy you've joined me here today for this series of uh, beginner watercolor lessons. We are growing on our wall back here. I've got several that we've already done and I hope your wall is growing with art too. Today, I thought what we could try to paint are three kayaks on a mountain river. Are you ready? It's a pretty Colorado scene. Let's do it. set up. We've got our Princeton Snap watercolor brushes and I've got a pencil. I've got our Winsor Newton Cotman paints. I've got an eraser and I've already got my paper taped off. You don't have to do this. I like to have a nice border on uh, the edges when I'm done and I'm trying to use up my washi tape so don't feel like you have to do that. Uh, the picture that we're using today, let me pull it back up here on the computer. It looked like a very Colorado scene. It's got some interesting perspective in it, and I wanted to talk about that real quick. Let me grab a ruler. When you look at our picture, and I will put it up here in a split screen, uh, you can see that the river bank migrates from about midway up the picture, comes across, and ends just a little bit higher. So here's our horizon. It ends just a little bit higher up here. And then the river up here is quite narrow because it's farther away from us. And then it comes down almost dead center. So just a little bit left of center. But these kayaks, there are three kayaks. We have a red one, a blue one, and another red one. They seem to all be pointing at this edge of the river right here. So that's where we're gonna orient our perspective is with one kayak pointing here. I've got the line just drawn for it that way. The blue one, my water bone away. The blue one right about here and then the red one right about here. Those are our perspective points. And let's go ahead and finish the drawing a little bit. Now we don't have to put a lot of detail in these kayaks. In fact, there's really not a lot to this drawing. We've got the horizon, we have three kayaks, and remember they're all pointing at that point where the riverbank uh, meets on the left edge of the drawing. And we have our skyline. Uh, so what we're going to do with this first kayak is just kind of try and get that basic shape. It's, it's like an elongated surfboard. Um, you just, just think about where your planes are when you're drawing this and uh, try and get that perspective down. If, if it's just too hard and you just really can't do it, um, go ahead and print off the reference photo and I will put a link to it in the description. Print it off in black and white so you don't have to waste all your color ink and then draw a grid on it. Um, just space your lines about uh, one inch apart. And if you're using an eight and a half by 11 paper, then um, it should be pretty easy because the paper we're painting on is five by seven. So however many squares that gives you on an eight and a half by 11 paper, it should give you eight and 11. Then you can uh, make those same grid marks. You just need to have eight of them on your watercolor paper and uh, 11 of them going the other direction. So you've got the same number of squares on each paper. Does that make sense? You're gonna make uh, the grid spaced about an inch apart on the printed sheet, your eight and a half by 11 paper, and then however many squares that gives you, you need the same number of squares on your five by seven watercolor paper that we're using here. So then you replicate what is in each square, just kind of the basic shapes, uh, just draw that on your grid and then you can erase those grid lines before you get started. So that's a real easy way to get the drawing situated on your paper and not have to worry about the perspective. But actually the reason I chose this particular one is because those canoes are all pointing at that same edge of the riverbank which actually will aid in your drawing if you choose to do it that way. And once again I'm going to go in with our big three-quarter inch stroke brush. We're going to start with the water. Now when, if I were to ask you what color is water, you'd probably say blue, because I would. But if we look closely at this stream, it's not blue at all. The lightest portions of it up back in here, we're going to use uh, ultramarine for, because that's going to be our, our lightest shade. But if you look down around as it gets closer to you, it's kind of a, there's yellow in there, there's green. 
So we'll have some fun with that. I think since this is so small and a little bit awkward getting in between those canoes, let's switch to our number six. And I'm just making sure I've got a good amount of water on the paper here. In order to have enough water on your paper, you're going to want to see an even sheen without any obvious puddles. So we'll start by going into our ultramarine blue. Water that down quite a bit because we don't want it that bright. And we're going to start up here with our lightest area of the river and kind of come down here and let it disappear. Very light. Now I want to take our cadmium yellow hue and we're going to go in with that and kind of go all along the riverbank here. Just dot it a little bit and around here and we're going to kind of stir as we get up here because we want that to mix and turn a little bit green. Now we're going to go into our Prussian blue and add that to our cadmium yellow. So we've got a good green going up there. Let's get this down just a bit so you can see. And now I want to go into that burnt sienna and add a little bit of that in there. There we go, a nice murky green. And we're going to use that murky green just to kind of go the length of the water. Now you don't want a solid wash of it. Uh, we want to go ahead and try and let that ultramarine shine through and just put these kind of stripes, these striations there. Because when we look at that picture, you'll see that the water is not really a smooth surface. So what we're doing is adding texture right now. And remember, since our watercolor is transparent, these layers that we're putting in, these initial layers, will show through on those final uh highlights and shadows when we get those put in. So let's continue to mix. Right now we're mixing that burnt sienna in with uh, some ultramarine. So we've just got a really dark brown gray. And let's put that, we'll put that shadow of that tree there. There's a couple shadows over here. This tree's casting a shadow. And this tree is casting a shadow. The boats cast shadows. By putting these first layers of shadows in while our paper is still damp there in that river area, what we can do is remind ourselves where we're headed, number one, and we're establishing this, the kind of blocking in of these colors. Uh, we're just really getting the stage set for our values. Now I'm mixing a much darker green with that Prussian blue and some burnt sienna. And you can see we're just kind of kind of going to kind of continue that uh, technique. Now you'll notice what I've done here is I kind of made a little mistake and I'm glad it happened because I want to show you guys how to correct it. I accidentally went over my uh, ultramarine blue, that part that I wanted to leave light. So while it's still damp, I'm just taking a paper towel that I've wadded up into a ball so that I can get a little bit of texture on there and I'm very gently blotting that out. So now what we're going to do is uh, to work on the riverbank on the opposite side. So I'm going to mix up some burnt sienna and some of the cadmium yellow light. I'm just looking for kind of a, an orangey tan shade. We don't really have a, a good sand color in this particular palette, so we're just going to mix one up. If you're looking to add some paints in that uh, empty space there, one that I would highly recommend adding is Buff Titanium. It's a really nice shade. It's uh, like a titanium white, like a, like a white watercolor, but it's also got some tan in it. Um, it will serve you well for things like uh, dirt, when we're painting dirt like we are now. Um, bricks, rocks, lots of animals, uh, things like that. So we've got this uh, a little bit, it's kind of like a peachy, a peachy color. And we're just going to put in that riverbank over there along the sand. I left some space where that shadow for the tree is. And now I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You, you, you could draw this ahead of time if you wanted to, but it's such a smooth riverbank and there's just gonna be some trees over there. So 
I decided to just go ahead and, and uh, eyeball it a little. And now I've put in just a little bit more of that burnt sienna so that I can get some dimension in the cliffs of that sand. And uh, now we're going into that burnt umber. That's the one next to the burnt sienna. And this time we're going to work on the bank that's on the side of the river towards us. So we'll mix that burnt umber with some of that Chinese white. As long as we have the Chinese white and the lamp black in this palette, I do want us to try and use them because they are versatile. Uh, you'll hear a lot of watercolorists say never use those paints. We never use them. And it's true. By and large, you, you really don't need them. But, you know, they tend to include them with just about every watercolor palette that you can buy. So... I think we'll go ahead and use them since we've got them. Uh, this burnt umber mixed with the Chinese white makes a really nice base color for those rocks. So let's go ahead and put that in and we'll just kind of fill in that rock texture with a little bit of dry brush technique. We're not going to actually try and paint each rock. Uh, but first, let's do the sky. I'm going in wet on dry. That means my paint is wet, but my paper is dry. And I'm putting a very thick line uh, wide, I mean, of that ultramarine blue across the top. And then I've just gotten my brush wet and I'm coaxing that pigment down to the top of the dune line there. Now I'm going to go in with one more really thick wash of pigment with ultramarine and put that along the top. Now when you hold your paper up, it's a little bit darker over here too, when you hold your paper up, it will let you have that paint just run down. Let gravity help you with that. And then if you start to see a bead here, just pick it up with a thirsty brush. And remember, a thirsty brush is one that is clean, that you've dipped in water and blotted off on your paper towel. And that will help prevent you from getting a back run. A back run is when you have a little too much water and then um, when this part up here dries, the water has no place to go, so it goes back up into the painting and it creates um, what looks like a big water stain. So let's dry this much off. You can see I got a little overzealous with my canoe here, so I'm gonna try. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do it, but I'm going to just get that wet and agitate that pigment a little bit to see if I can lift this up. I may not be able to lift it completely, but I can probably make it a little bit lighter. Got a little wild with my paint. And that is okay because what we're going to be painting will be darker than those parts. So let's do work on those canoes. Let's start with this one back here. I want you to go into your warm red, which is the third one in, and that is the cadmium red hue. It's almost an orange. Fairly thick paint. We're going to paint this back canoe here. Kayak, whatever it is. Is this one a kayak? Yeah, I think this was a kayak. There you go. That's the first wash on that one. And then with the same paint, we'll come and paint this one in front. This first wash of red is going to serve as our lightest shade of red. And the reason that we wanted to go with the warm red here instead of the cool red is because that will be reflected in the sun. Those lightest colors are going to have sunlight on them, meaning they will be warmer. So uh, we'll continue getting this a nice smooth wash on this red kayak, and then we will go on to the blue canoe. I'm going to use the Prussian blue because it's such a rich blue on this canoe. So let's do this one. Just gonna go in with a bead along the top. And we're gonna handle this one exactly the same way we did the sky. We'll put that pigment along the top and then get our brush wet and just gently agitate the lower bar on that pigment and bring it down to the bottom of the canoe. And that way we'll keep the dark tone of the color toward the top of the canoe and we can go back in just like we did with the sky and darken that again and because the entire canoe is wet it will gradually mingle and mix and create for a lovely gradient and now we can mix some green for our first layer of the trees and we'll get a puddle of this going right here
And I want to mix that with our lemon yellow. All right, now what we're going to do, I'm just going to block in the shapes of the trees with this green, and I know it's transparent and our colors will show through, but this is going to help us decide where to put these trees because we we're going to go over all of these with uh, a lighter, excuse me, a darker uh, pigmentation. So you can see I'm just holding my brush with the bristles pointing toward the top of my paper, and I'm just kind of tapping it and rolling it along, varying that angle, and just trying to get some different, uh, different shapes in for trees, not being specific at all, just kind of getting a general tree line in. And then we'll go ahead and dry this off. I wanna go in and do another level on the, the water. So let's go in with just the ultramarine again. And this time we're going to go wet on dry. So kind of where these, uh, the lightest parts are, just little lines to suggest the, the water there. And as we continue with the second wash over the water, you can see I've got a darker green mixed in that same puddle that we used before. And I'm just kind of filling in some of the spaces there where it just needs a little bit more value. Um, just keep referring to your reference photo and um, just kind of gently put in these current lines, the little tiny waves that are in the water, and gradually darken what you need to and um, just get the, get the different levels of the gradient to your liking. And once you feel like your river has enough detail with uh, a little more dark shadows added, then you can give that a dry. And now we're gonna go back in with our large stroke brush Get a watery mix of that ultramarine and just very lightly pull that across your river. We're going to focus only on the lightest part of the river here and make sure you're using a very light pressure because we don't want to disturb the pigment underneath. Now what I want us to do, here's our sand mix over here. We're going to get a touch of that black and add to that. So now we've got a good dark brown that was once our sand and now it's a, a good dark color that would look like wet sand. And we're going to go along the riverbank here, up on the sand part, not in the river. What we're establishing here is that darkest line to separate the riverbank from the river and you'll notice that I'm not making a smooth straight line with my paintbrush. I'm just kind of doing little broken lines there and adding a little bit more black to that brown just to get it a touch bit darker. I'm adding the shadow. The, the riverbank itself creates a shadow in the river. So we're establishing the first layer of that shadow here. Now on that dark blue puddle that we had there with the Prussian blue, I have added just a touch of black to that to darken that even further. And now we're going to go in and get our darkest values of the river put in. And since this is the darkest level of shadow that's in the river, we'll also use this to accentuate the shadows made by the canoes. Now we'll add just a touch of black to that mix we had for the rocks on our side of the painting, the side closest to us. On a paper towel, and now let's just pull that across. You've got the pigment on your brush and you've rolled it off on a paper towel and all we're doing is pulling it across the surface of the paper. This is done with an extremely light pressure and you don't want your paint to be too wet. This will give us a nice natural look for some rocks. All right, now let's think about these canoes here. We need to give them a little bit of detail. I'm gonna go into our cool red. And here's where our cad red was, so we can just put it right there. This is our alizarin crimson that we're using. And now I'm going to go into this darkest blue that we mixed from the river and just put a tiny bit in there. So we're mixing kind of a very dark purple. That's gonna be our shadow color for this first canoe here. So we're gonna paint along the bottom. This is wet into dry. Still using that number six round. Turn this this way here. 
And let's see, let's just look at some of the shapes on this canoe. We have a little rectangle here, just doing a little L shape, and one here. I think those are carry handles. And then this seat back here will do the shaded side. So it looks about like that. And this one here, we're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to draw the life jacket in there. We'll just leave these boats empty. And this up here. For all of these shadows on the boat, on all the boats rather, the trick is to use the uh, a cooler version of the pigment. So here we've gone in with the alizarin crimson, darkened it up with the same river shadow that we had, and only paint the parts where uh, the sun would cast a shadow. So you can see by um, not filling in that entire shape and just uh, filling in the, the inner walls of where the shadows would be, we've created a three-dimensional effect on that first canoe. And now we'll go ahead and do the same thing um, on the far away canoe, but we don't need to do near as much uh, detail. We're just gonna put that dark shadow along the bottom. Wherever an object touches the ground, that's where the shadow is the most intense. So we do want to have that line uh, of the dark shadow right against the, the ground there. And we're still darkening our uh, boat shades with that darkest shade of the river so that we can have a good natural shadow. And we'll just touch up the darkest parts of the canoe here. And we'll remember to pay close attention to that part where the canoe touches the ground because that's where the shadow will be the darkest. And then we'll go ahead and give this a dry. And Instead of going in with a black, I'm going to use our black fine liner. And let's do draw the, the handle. So let's see, it's connected here. And it comes down and connects on the other side. And let's see, we're just going to kind of suggest some shapes here. And we can even deepen that shadow along the bottom. All right, now let's go up and try the blue canoe. First of all, we'll make this shadow deeper. And let's see, we've got a little lip right up here. And we'll go ahead and put that on the other side as well. And then we'll come down here like so, just with a little bit of a dotted line to suggest what that is. And then there's some writing right here. And it looks like a little hook of some kind comes off. And finally for this one, has some information there, a little bit of writing here. There. And that's how you can use a fine liner to really get those details on your boat. Now that those fine liner pieces are done, we've got some sap green and we're going to go in and do the next layer of our trees. Just little by little, add in some leaves. They don't have to be leaf shaped. It's basically dots is what you're doing. So you're just going to kind of continue to randomly uh, put these dots, which will represent our leaves, 
in the sap green all the way across your tree line. And I think when I got uh, to the far right, I think I did uh, splay out my brushes, my the bristles on my brush a little bit. There we go. I'm, I'm uh, spinning it around on the palette and doing some grassy lines there. And when you've gone all the way across the horizon, now I'm mixing just a touch of black with that sap green to darken it up a little bit. And now we'll go in and do the same thing for our third layer on these trees. And you can see here, what since all of these layers are transparent, it's just going to give you a nice dimensionality to these trees. It'll give it a, a definite sense of depth that we're not looking at uh, one plane of greenery. We're looking at uh, several several feet of trees. And I've added just a touch more black to that green. It looks very dark right now, but remember, watercolor does dry a little bit lighter. So as it got off in the distance, when I went uh, farther to the right, I wanted to make sure and have that darker pigment there. And I'm just punching up some of the grasses along the entire shoreline. And then we'll be done with this part. Next, we're going to really have a very dark brown by mixing some black in with uh, that shade that we used for the opposite bank. And that way we can get the darkest shadow along the water along the opposite edge of the riverbank. So once again, what I'm doing here is just doing kind of a very broken line along the, the riverbank so that we can create that shadow that is cast from the riverbank into the river itself. I have to laugh. I'm so sorry that this is so far away, zoomed out, so you can see my vast array of accoutrements on my desk. I do have my coffee, I've got a water bottle, I've got my paint water, <laughs> my computer. There's an awful lot going on there, and I'm so sorry. So if we could just uh, focus on the, <laughs> the painting we're working on. I do have that white gel pen, and I'm just adding some highlights here and there on the boat and uh, for some reflections in the water. So I'm just kind of uh, skimming that along not really doing straight lines just kind of again focusing on that broken line so as you can see i'm holding the pen further back so that i have less control of it and that just kind of gets some random highlights throughout the painting and there you go guys there's our nice river trip i hope that you guys had a lot of fun painting with me today in this uh, lesson number six well, I don't know about you, but now I kind of feel like just uh, sitting here by the bank of this river and letting the sun shine on my face while I've got my toes dangling in the water. I hope that you guys enjoyed painting this one and it gives you visions of warmer days. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time.